Hello and welcome to Mini Music Monday. Here we are. The, the, is that the, called the slide whistle? Yeah, that was actually a leftover from the, the session, the raw impressions session from my colonoscopy. Mm-hmm. Just happened to be on the tape, so mm. I kept it on there. Oh, okay. Yeah, just like in my announcement for Mini Music Man, <sighs> Mini Music Monday Man was, <laughs> was poised right there, like at, at the end of the slide whistle, so I just kept it. You know what I'm liking about summer? We've been in summer one day, but you know what I'm liking about it so far? What's that? That you're looking at me a lot. Or maybe it's because you're, you're home after being gone for a month, but you're giving me a lot of like good like eyes, like you're checking me out. Oh, really? Yeah, it's fun. Well, um, is it because people wear less in the summertime? So, well, humidity, mm-hmm. it kind of, I don't know, it, it works for me. Turns you on. It kind of does. <laughs> to be frank. Song. Oh. Commencing. <laughs> to be Lou. In to be seven. Lewd. To be Lewd Lou. In seven. Does. Big sales. Big sale. 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 Heartbroken and attractive, sad sloppy mess. Looking for approval and easily impressed. Where they say, but why would I listen when it feels this good? No one lives their life doing all the things they say they should. Confusion turns me upside down. I'm lost as quickly as I'm found. But soon enough it turns around. Perfect love, my chance. But where they say, but why would I listen? I need to know what I've been missing. No one you can trust. I'm all little boy, lonely, curious, lust. And confusion turns me upside down. I'm lost as quickly as I'm found. But soon enough, it turns around. That was a rebound in its original tuning. Oh. The tuning that's on the album, which is in D sharp. Okay. Do you D, typically D, play it different? Or? I Well, after playing it live, mm-hmm. I realized I couldn't sing loud enough because it's the singing was low on the record. But when, when I was playing live, mm-hmm. my voice couldn't really get over the top of the drums and the guitar and stuff. So I used a capo or a capo as they refer to it in England, um, Mm -hmm. a capo. I used a capo to like make it so it's higher. Okay. So for instance, this is kind of where I play it. 
Heartbroken and attractive. Mm -hmm. Sad, sloppy mess. That sounds familiar. See, that's what I've been playing it like for the last, I don't know, 25 years. Okay. But originally it was this. Heartbroken and attractive. Low, lower. Yeah. So I did it. I did, Interesting. I did that in the original, the original pitch. Neato. Yeah. So that's, it's for purists. Take that, Sebadudos. Some people notice that kind of stuff. Like, wait a minute, it's pitched that up. That sounds lower, higher. Yeah. Oh. Some people can notice that stuff. They got they brains can. for it. They can notice. That's true. Can I ask you a couple questions about that song? Yeah. Um, what inspired it? Um. Well, I had. Uh, broken up with my first girlfriend okay um you know she sent me packing more or less uh-huh or i went back to my parents house you know and uh i uh, began writing songs and i wrote soul and fire and two years two days is that also on this record no oh that's on a record called bubble and scrape okay but so anyway when i started to emerge from my funk from being you know dumped mm -hmm. uh I got a new girlfriend. So it was kind of inspired by yeah. a rebound. Like yeah, it was my literally rebound. it was literally a rebound. It was oh, literally liter fun. literally a rebound. Okay. Yeah. So and did you feel like kind of empowered writing it or Yeah. You know, I was just kind of I was in a good spot writing songs, you know, they were yeah, all kind of Yeah, I feel coming. like that one's really catchy. Like it's a really yeah. good kind of for lack of a better word like pop song. Yeah. I got, you know, you know I, I It's a hit. <laughs> Well, you know, Bake Sale, the record, it kind of did, it was the most well-received of any of the Sebado records. Mm. Easy. Easy. It got really, it got really well-reviewed and... That's nice. People were psyched about it. We were psyched about it because it, it the record came very easily. Where did you record it? Well, we did four songs first before Eric Gaffney quit the band. We did four songs at Steve Albini's house. Oh, okay. recorded by Bob Weston, but, okay. but Steve was around. He actually came, he came over my shoulder once while I was mixing one of the songs and he said, mm. are those bells? <laughs> and I was like, oh God, because I could just sense, I was like, oh God, it's Steve Albini, because I feared the man. I feared him. Okay. <laughs> um, not so much in latter years. He seemed a lot nicer, but back in the day, he was an intimidating presence and he was right behind me. Mm. And, and I was like, what does that mean? I'm like, no. Was that, was that in Chicago? It was in Chicago. And, um, Where were you staying? I don't remember. Hmm. Possibly there. Hmm. Um, Bob Weston. Um, we were, or maybe at Bob Weston. So we probably was, stayed. At, you know what? We stayed at Bob Weston's place. You did? Same we place? Did. That no. we stayed at? No. No. So he's moved since then. He's moved since then. We, we stayed at that place. But... Uh, yeah, and Bob had just gotten back from recording Nirvana, so he had wow. the In Utero record on cassette. So we listened to that. Wow. And um, So you got to hear it before the world. Yeah. Yep. And uh, But we were recording at that time uh -huh. at, at Steve's house, because they, they were back, you know, Steve and Bob were back from recording Nirvana. So when was this? Like, this was the early 90s? Like 93. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 93 ish didn't look that up so it was you and jake and eric gaffney yeah okay that's that's who was sebado at the that's time that's who sebado was it was eric's last recording with the band he did we did four songs and he's the drummer he, he was a drummer on Sorry. my songs was he, was the, he was the no was he the drummer of sebado he was the drummer for my songs. Okay. See, this is the thing. Sebado, I don't know. I'm we confused. all switched. This this was one of the novel things about Sebado. One okay. of the that we switched instruments when we Did played. Did Jake ever play drums with you yes. guys? Yes. Oh. Jake played drums on Eric's songs, and I oh. played bass on Eric's songs. Oh. And Eric played crazy guitar. So you guys were like passing the baton around all yeah, the time. Yeah, totally. Huh? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that's a big part of Sebado. That's a oh. big, that's <laughs> one of the big... Well, I don't know. Welcome I'm to not... Sebado. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway. You know, Sebado. <laughs> <laughs> so Eric quit the band. Well, it was... wasn't required to know that to date you, so oh, like, no. lucky me. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky me. The less you know, the better it's for me. <laughs> There's too much info about Lou Barlow in the world, and thankfully you were spared most of it. 
<laughs> you know, I, uh, well, I don't know. I just, I, I, I couldn't envision the band. I didn't know what it was. And then I realized I had no idea what Eric Gaffney did. I would have did. liked to consider us a collective. That's what I wanted. I wanted us to be a collective, mm. you know, sort of a collective of songwriters that all supported each other. Okay. And we did that by switching instruments. Okay. Um, How artsy fartsy well, of you. Well, no, you know, it wasn't unheard of, but it was, you know, <laughs> it was kind of our thing. And um, so all three of you guys were there at Steve Albini's house yep. recording Bake Sale. Yes. And then. No, we... well, we didn't know it was going to be Bake Sale yet. Oh. We just did four songs. We were on the road. Oh. And I was like, I, we got to get air. I, I was like, we have to record these songs now live because we were playing them live and I, we were in a really good spot. So they were and new songs that did not exist on an album yet. Exactly. And I desperately oh. wanted to capture Eric playing drums because he was like. It was rare to catch. I mean, like if we were, I was like, if we weren't on tour, then to getting him to focus on drums would be almost impossible. But if we're on tour and we've got Eric, I've got him. He's captive. He's trapped. He's yeah. trapped. Eric's yeah. trapped. I'm taking him to the studio to capture his drumming because his drumming was so unique and dynamic. I was like, I've oh. got to get it. So four of the songs, none of which were rebound. So or were skull. you just like, how did you, can I ask another thing? Like, how did you... So if you're in the middle of a tour, a U.S. tour, obviously, were you guys like in a van? Yeah, we were in Just a rented minivan. Just the three of you, or did you have a we tour an, manager? We were in an Aerost, a Ford Aerostar van. No, we didn't have tour managers, no. So it's just the three of you? Three of us. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Hey, I, I mean, because you, you said later that you had a tour bus with Sabato, so I didn't know when that we did. was. That was later. Okay. That's got when it. we got big. Oh, okay. After bake sale? After bake sale. Okay. Bake sale was van. Um... Actually, okay. at one point we had well, a van and a, and another car, which was super fun. We had, <laughs> we had CB radios that we could we talk to each other between. Okay, so I'm just trying to understand what happened. So you were on tour with Jake and Eric for what were you supporting then? Bubble the and scrape. Okay, thank you. Bubble and scrape. Bubble but and scrape. So you, you were fire, you, you know, were all that. You were playing shit. these new songs, and you were like, yeah. "Okay, I'm going to seize this moment." Was this spontaneous? Did you literally land in Chicago? No, no, I set it up. I set it up with how, Bob Weston. How did you set it up via email? This is the nineties. No, I'm on the phone, and also you we called him. Did we our, have email then? Our book, no. Our booking oh God, agent, our booking agent then. Susan McCarthy, Suzanne. also lived in Chicago. It was like okay. a little. I had a real. I had a support system. So know, people that I could directly but that communicate still seems kind of last minute, right? Because you were like, no, it wasn't last minute. It was I, you know, I was a. I was thinking ahead. I was like, we got it. And I, we had done it before. So I, you all must have played in Chicago then, too. Of course. Okay. Yes. Got it. You know, probably played lounge acts. All right. I don't know. Maybe. Um, I'm just asking. I'm curious. Um, I'm just curious yeah. to know how this all happened. So, like, no, we happened to be in Chicago, and I was like, hey, let's take a day and record. Just Bob. one day? Maybe. I think it was one day. It was easy because we were on tour, so we knew the songs really well. Okay. That's the thing is, because I, I had Eric. I mean, getting Eric... Mm-hmm. And that zone was like impossible. So Eric but played on him. four songs he at Steve Albini's songs. house with Bob Weston and recording then, you. And then Eric quit the band. Bob Fay, who had always been um, our sort of trusty fill-in drummer guy, but uh-huh. mostly a really he was my he was my connection for marijuana. Oh, and he was also he was a good <laughs> friend. Listening to records and smoking weed with Bob Fay was like the best. Okay. And so he could kind of play drums. So he came along. He just became the the main, the sort of full time drummer. Before that, he always filled in for Eric whenever Eric decided he didn't want to play with us. So after you recorded these four songs in the middle of this tour, did Eric finish the tour? He with did. You? Okay. No, he finished his tour. He finished the. So he yeah. finished the tour, and then when you finished the tour, you were like. Hmm, head scratch. I think we need to do another album. And then Eric quit the band? Eric quit the band. Okay. That's what it was sort of a legendary thing where he said, I don't want to go on tour. I don't <laughs> want you to play on any of my songs. This is me personally. And I want one third of the record advance. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, and for me, who had no boundaries, uh-huh. pretty much, that was my boundary. I was like, I was like, no way. No way, Eric. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe we need to continue the bake sale I story next you... Mini Music Monday. I'm intrigued. <laughs> I've got more questions. I know. This is it. This is like the Deep Wound episode. <laughs> bake sale. All right. Sounds bake good. Bake hmm. sale. Bake sale. Bake sale. And on that bake sale, Mini Music Monday concludes. Thank you so much for listening. Raw impression.
Sessions. <lacht>